out myself. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Bitchin' Brainstorm podcast. I'm your host, Elaine Terso, and I'm here with Lisa, who is one of our panelists for the Elevate Your Online Presence Business Summit coming up on April 19th and 20th. And Lisa is going to be on our leads and sales panel on April 19th at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. That is going to be such a great panel. I cannot wait. And the cool thing about that is it's the only one because we didn't have enough for, for both days. And so it okay. worked out. So you're going to be it girl on like, there's two other ladies <laughs> that'll be with you, but that yeah. is the only panel that you'll get to see is on April 19th. So be sure to come and join us. So before we get into so, the meat uh, and potatoes, Lisa, can you tell us a little about yourself? Absolutely. Uh, again, Lisa Rabel, uh, my company name is Rebel Girl Marketing. And the name of the book that I wrote is called The Rebel Girl's Guide to Marketing. My mission is to help small businesses stay in business mm. and descendants. Mm -hmm. Because according to the Forbes research, the four main reasons that small businesses don't make it is because one of them is marketing. Mm. And another one is processes and management. And so sales is part of that is part of that other reason. And having like over 25 years of experience in both sales and marketing as a marketing director and a sales exe executive, I'm just taking all that like corporate knowledge and helping small businesses survive, not even survive, but thrive. Mm. And I live for those aha moments with marketing people with, uh, with the marketing for small businesses you know, because most people have only taken like a class in high school or college mm -hmm. and they don't, then they start a business and all of a sudden they're like, well, how do I get the word out? And what am I selling? And, and it's so interesting because I have an entire training just on the power of your pitch, because mm -hmm. I'm telling you one of the main reasons that people don't like going to networking is they hate answering the question. So what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> What I mean, do? like yeah. they do it every day. They know how to do it and they don't like answering that question in networking events. And I help solve that problem of knowing what to say, mm -hmm. where to go, who your ideal client is, you know, and I, and I don't do it as a, a as a employee. I do it as a, as a consultant, as a, as a mentor, you might even want to say a marketing mentor. Mm -hmm. So like I help you understand it and then I teach you how to do it. And then I let you go. Yeah. So one of the things you mentioned is the pitch, right? And I know that you call yours a power pitch instead of a sales pitch. Can you kind of walk us through what's the difference between the two? Well, a sales pitch is you're trying to sell somebody something. And I'm not sure about you, but I've never bought something in the first 30 seconds to met somebody. No, so it's not. It's no, it's not a sales pitch. But, and what I think is interesting is that people think, I call it the show up and the throw up. Like somebody says, so what do you do? And like for two minutes, you keep talking. And the way I want people to see a power pitch is you say something so interesting and so brilliant in 15 seconds that they go, really? How do you do that? Or really tell me more. Or because what's happening is in a networking conversation, you're not just sitting there yapping. The other person's like standing there going, gee, what do I want to buy on the way home? I got to get milk. I got to get bread. Mm -hmm. And you're still talking away, right? Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is you want to start a conversation. And so the power pitch is simply there to start a conversation. It's like playing a game of catch with a catcher, mm -hmm. a catcher and a catcher, mm -hmm. back and forth, back mm -hmm. and forth. So Lisa, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> so my job as a marketing consultant is to make sure that when my clients have clients who need their products and services, they think of them first. It's simple as that brand yeah. awareness, knowing who your target audience is. Mm -hmm. I have a need. Oh, I know. I don't think of this company right here. Mm -hmm. You want to be top of mind all the time because your clients, just like my clients don't need me all the time, but when they yeah. do need my services, I want them to think of me before they think of anybody else. And I yeah. want to do the same thing for my clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are some of the things that we need in order to create that perfect pitch? What are some of so, the elements we need? Yeah, there's a couple of things that I, first of all, it's less than 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. The second one is how do you add value? Mm. And the, the, the other one is like, maybe it's your why, like the Simon Sinek why, why did you, what is your passion? What is your mission? Mm -hmm. It needs all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And it can be funny. So I have one that I usually use at a general networking. And I say, I'm the nanny McPhee of marketing. I help my clients with their marketing as long as they need it. 
and then I'm gone. Mm -hmm. And people can either go, oh, that's funny, Nanny McPhee, or they go, who's Nanny McPhee? Either way, it starts a conversation. And sometimes all I say is, I'm the Nanny McPhee of marketing, Mm -hmm. and I leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And so you, it has to be something that grabs their attention and asks them for more information. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a perfect example. There's this young man, I did it for an entrepreneur group and he's a handyman and he went on and on. I do this and I do this and I electrical and I do landscaping, blah, blah, blah. And he was like showing up and throwing up. But after I ran him through the process of the power pitch, he said, I'm a handyman. I do everything on your home to-do list. You hate to do. Mm. That's it. Perfect that was his pitch. Yeah. Exactly. Perfect. So yeah, it was, it was great. So that's, that's why I think it's, it's important to like show how you add value and then get that emotion, right? Get yeah. that emotion in there somehow. Yeah. yeah, no, I love that. I think that's really, really important. And, you know, I am a huge fan of networking. I think, you know, um, it's how I've grown my business. I have immersed myself in, um, in the community that I've chosen to be a part of and, yeah you know, it's not in-person networking anymore because everything's kind of gone online. Um, So I'm missing the, what do you do, you know, conversations that we're having, but still we introduce ourselves. And so do you have any recommendations on how to, you know, if you have 30 seconds or 60 seconds to say what you do, do you have a a different um, introduction for a pitch that is intriguing and leaves interest and makes them ask more questions. Like, I want to connect with you. Do you, do you have any tips on, on how to garner that interest at a networking event when you introduce yourself? So what's interesting is that sometimes you've got 30 seconds, sometimes you've got 60 seconds. Yeah. And what I love to do is I like to bookend. So Mm -hmm. you always have the same introduction. Okay. So people can remember it every single time. And you have the, always have the same clothes. Like okay. my clothes is there are benefits to a rebel mindset. Mm-hmm. Let's chat. Mm-hmm. And so, but in the middle, I tell a story of whatever is good for that. I tell a story of a, of a client of something that happened, how we solved a problem for somebody okay. or how I um, diagnosed a problem that the client didn't even know that they had, which actually fixed their client experience. Right. So it's, it's all of those kinds of things. So you just tell a quick story in between of how you solved a problem for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And more than likely they can relate to that story. Yeah. More than likely they know somebody who can relate to that story. Mm -hmm. And that's when they go, she can fix that. Yes. I want to give her a call. Yes. It's, you know, way back in my BNA, in my BNI days, you know, um, I did this, I was a photographer at the time and, you know, we had 50 weeks, right? We had one week where we were doing visitors day um, and we had one week where we were doing training. So I sat down and wrote out 50 things that I could talk about as a photographer, all of the different products, all the different types of photo shoots, all the different, anything and everything, because I looked at my, that group as my my team, my marketing team, and I needed to fill their heads with keywords and things to listen for because, you know, that BNI is very referral. It's referral net referral marketing, um, as opposed to what I'm doing now, which is connection based, which is more about the one-on-one building relationships, business will follow, which is super great, very different, but each have their own unique spin. And so I think it's really important that based on the type of group you have, that you have a custom kind of commercial or whatever it is that you're going to say for each type of group, because they're very different. And I think there's so much value in having stuff prepared for both and really curate a plan of some sort. If you know, you're only going to this one group once a month and you've got 60 seconds, or you're going to this group once a week, you've got, you, you really got to be able to curate what you're going to say at each one, because it's all going to be different, different purposes. Yeah. Yeah, I have another train called networking on purpose. Uh And it's about how people think networking is just get lead done. And I, could not disagree with that more. I think yeah. there's three reasons that you need mar- marketing, um, networking. Mm-hmm. One of them is the fact that you do need to get lead gen. You do mm-hmm. need to do that. But mm-hmm. second one is a sense of community, especially yeah. in this Zoom based world that we live in. Yeah. And then last one is education. I don't care what industry you're in, mm-hmm. things change. 
Yeah. And so making sure you're always abreast of the latest technology or tools or tips or whatever it could be is very important. And I think you need a different pitch for each one of those. Yeah. Cause I'm not going to sell to my marketing peeps. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, um, but I could form an alliance with them that right. I might do something that they don't do or vice versa. Yeah. I just, I think it's really important for you to be able to, to do all of those things and have it memorized. Mm-hmm. I always, I always tease in the middle of my thing. I always say, you don't want to go up there and go, what do I do? Wait, I know this. Hold on. I practiced this. I went to this lady. She taught me how to do this. Um, I know this, you know, you want to like, you just yeah. want it to roll off your tongue. You don't want to have yeah. to think about it. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's fun stuff. Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, um, one of the things I don't know about you, but when I go to networking, I always try to set an intention of what is my purpose there today? Like, what's my goal? And so I give myself and I challenge because I usually am the one facilitating these, these meetings. As I say, find five people, three people, two people, one person, I don't care what your number is, but find at least one person from this call that you're like, I want to connect with you, whether it's energy. Yeah. Yeah. It's your energy. They said something that like piqued your interest. Like, Oh, what is that? I want to learn more or (laughs) I can help them. They can help me. Yes. Someone for fun, a reconnect, by the way, is my favorite thing to do. I call it the second date where (laughs) I'm reconnecting with someone I've already connected with. It's got like a catch up, like what's new with you? Here's what's new with me. Like, how can we support each other? Because you've already kind of broken down that first date barrier, you know, and that's where you really get to build, really, truly build the like factor is mm-hmm. the second date. You know, we know, like trust, but no, like trust, really, yep. mm-hmm, all that right in there in that second date. So I'm always encouraging people to network with intention. Yes. You, yes. You could probably stand right alongside me and teach the same class, but <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just all the stuff I've learned over the years. Right. So yeah. yeah, and I, what's what's I think the biggest mistake people make when it comes to networking and even marketing and trying to do those things is they're trying to get the person who's in front of them to be convinced to do something. When if you back up a little bit and say, I'm just going to inform this person what I do and how I help so they can go in their Rolodex dating myself in their CRM in their head. <laughs> And, and figure out who that person is like, and then go, Oh, I need to introduce Lisa to that person. Yeah. And so that's, and I think that's where we make the biggest mistake is we want to sell to the person who's standing right in front of us. And we don't want to do that at all. We just want to let them know what we do, how we help. Mm -hmm. And if they become a client bonus, but we really want that Rolodex slash CRM in their head to be triggered for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's not always them. It's who they know, because, you know, they used to say like each person walking into a room has at least 200 people, at least minimum in their, yeah. in their contacts. Right. And yep. being able to connect with their audience is super important. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You and I are do- definitely speaking the same language. I, I just, know. Are we sisters? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is that people like, it's so hard. I'm like, it's not hard if you think of it this way. Yeah. So what I always say is marketing is storytelling. And mm-hmm. selling is simply telling that story to other people. Yeah. Where people get caught up mm-hmm. is they don't know their story. Yeah. That's so important. That happens so often. It's 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 so common. And so if that's you, if you're listening to this, if that's you, take a deep breath, give yourself mm-hmm. some grace because mm-hmm. you just don't have your story yet. And that's yeah. that's that's what I do for small business owners is I help them figure that out. So how like one of the things that I've heard people say is I don't have a unique story. I've heard that. And I'm like, "Mm, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. So where does someone start if they think I don't have a unique story to tell? So I love this question because it comes up every time I do a strategy session Hmm. with a business owner um, and their team, especially the business owner. So I always say, why did you start your business in the first place? And what is the first answer I always get? Money. It's great money. Mm. Okay. (laughs) Money's a tool. It's a motivator maybe, but it's not your why. Yeah. Yeah. Um, The perfect thing that I can tell you is I did this with another group, this training with a different group. And this woman owns a hair salon and it's different than most other hair salons. And she's like, I don't, I don't have a unique selling, right? She's like, I don't have that. And when I was trying to get people to figure out, figure it out. And what we came to figure out is that she started it because she helps women have confidence. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. So anybody of 
you know, the Gen X age, we grew up in a still a very, and it still is and can be a very male dominated world. Mm -hmm. And so for women, it might seem superficial, but if you look good and you feel good, you're going to be confident and walk in and have a better productive, more, I don't know, more like, more like powerful day. And so what she said was, I may be doing hairstyles, but what I'm really selling is confidence. Yeah to get out into the business world. Cause most of her mm-hmm. clientele are business women. Yeah. And so that's what she does. And so that when she figured that out, she changed her whole marketing message to like, go out there and dominate. And I'm going to make you look good while you do it. That's the yeah. concept. And so, yeah. um, yeah, people, everybody has, everybody has that one unique thing. Yeah, absolutely. I could not agree with you more. Could not agree with you more. This has been a super fun conversation. I feel like we're totally sisters from another mister. Um, Are we best friends now? Like, what do we do? Okay. Thank you. (laughs) So um, just a reminder, everybody, April 19th, come and check out the leads and sales panel. Um, Lisa will be there along with a couple of other panelists and I cannot wait to continue this conversation because, you know, our whole goal is to help you elevate your online presence online, right? And you need to have this down. If you, everybody wants more money in their business, everybody wants more clients in their business. That's what I hear all the time. But if you don't have this shit down, you guys, it's not going to happen. Like we have to, this has to happen. So make sure you tune in. You do not want to miss this panel. If you're trying to get more clients, this is the panel you need to be at. Okay. Okay. So thank you, Miss Lisa, for coming to hang Excellent. out with me. Thank you. It was so wonderful to meet you. And I cannot wait. This is going to be so amazing. Yes. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. All right. Have a great day, everybody. See you guys later.